which I believe that you all are all on guard users. Uh, also, there are quite a few new pieces in the latest version of the software package. Uh, the current version prior to version 8 was a version 7.6, and there's so much that's new, uh, we decided that we weren't going to let it get lost in the mix of the 7 series. So instead of releasing 7.7, .7, we jumped straight to version 8. So Dennis and I are going to tag team a little bit today. We've got a really cool, new, exciting uh, interface for the entire platform called Magic Monitor. And uh, so that's going to be like the second half of our presentation today. Uh, but here I'll go ahead and get this started. And what we'll do is we'll show the um, the on guard update and then we will uh, move on over to Magic Monitor. So bear with me just a second. I'll launch the presentation. All right, let me know if you can see my screen OK. Taylor, can you see my screen? OK, thanks. All right, great. All right, so one of the things that we've done uh, and we've worked very, very hard over the course of the last few years, um, actually back to 2016, is to kind of re-architect OnGuard to run in a browser environment. So everything that you see below the timeline here are all new browser interfaces that we've created for OnGuard. So this um, re-architecting of the platform um, represents about a $70 million investment on the side of Linnell S2 to re-architect OnGuard to run in a browser environment. So, you know, you all might be used to running OnGuard in a full thick client environment, and now we have all of these different browser interfaces. So if you want to be able to manage it from your desktop, but through a browser, and then also have the same user experience as you move away from your desktop and you're moving through the facility, uh, you're at lunch, you're at home, you know, and then you can use that same interface to be able to manage the platform, open and control doors, uh, lock and unlock, uh, view cardholder records, view video, you'll be able to do all of those things now uh, through a browser. And as you can see, that timeline continues all the way up to the newest version, version 8. So. The one thing for me that's really exciting about version 8, other than a few of the new features that are built into it, is that all of these browser interfaces that we've been working on over the course of the last five years were all, I would say, partial. They weren't fully baked yet. So we would release a new version, version 1.0 or version 1.1, and it would have aspects of what you could do in a thick client. Um, and then we would build on those over the course of years and, you know, come out with some new um, browser interfaces as well. But I believe that version 8 really rounds out the browser interfaces so that now, you know, when you're, for example, when you're in the alarm monitoring screen and you're watching what's going on in the facility. Prior to version 8, uh, you could do probably 75% of what you could do in the thick client on the alarm monitoring side. In version 8, you can literally do 100% of what you can do in the thick client now from the thin client. So there really is no reason you know, unless you just really like the look and feel of the thick client to have to, you know, use that anymore or feel like that is the only interface that we have. Also, one of the things that we've done with the new thin client is uh, when you're talking about photo ID badging, because you may have a badging application now with us, and you also may have your alarm monitoring application. Those are two separate thick client applications. Um, when we've gone to the thin clients, we've actually combined photo ID badging and alarm monitoring all into one. And so now instead of paying for two different um, client licenses, uh, you literally pay for one and uh, and it's at a, a greatly reduced price. Um, so, so there's an extra additional feature that comes with uh, version eight as well. One of the things that we've done over the class course of the last few years is we've kind of broken things up into what we call the OnGuard ecosystem. So we have a section up at the top left um, where we consider the employees we give them the ability to uh, to kind of take control and do some things on their own. Uh, instead of sending an email that says, I need to be able to get into the IT room on Friday night at five o'clock because we're doing a major server upgrade and it's all hands on deck, but I wouldn't normally have access to that door. But I've been requested to be here over the weekend to help with the upgrade. Usually in today's environment, that starts an email trail. I email my supervisor, my supervisor emails security, security emails the IT manager, and it starts this big round robin of emails about can Greg go into that space over the weekend? Now I can just jump into cardholder self-service and request access to that door. I don't have to know who the approving authority is. I just request access and hit send, and it goes ahead and it routes that to the proper person. Um, then when it gets to that proper person, if you notice here where my cursor is, there's a product over here called Access Manager. Access Manager actually is where that approving authority would look at those requests. They can mark it as 
approve, denied, or pending. And then whenever they uh, change any of the status of that, the cardholder who sent that request is going to get feedback that says, yes, we've seen your request uh, and uh, this is the current status of it. And then if I mark it as pending, that gives me a little bit of time to do my investigation. Why does Greg need to be into the server room over the weekend? That's a very unusual request. So I'm gonna go do some investigation. I will come back to it, either approve it or deny it later. So but again, it stops that email trail. Uh, Blue Diamond Mobile uh, is our application now where you can use your phone as a credential and you no longer have to have a badge. So your phone is your credential, your phone is your badge. So no more purchasing of the, of the plastic cards to get in the door if you're using the Blue Diamond readers. We've also created a completely new visitor management application uh, end to end. Um, so cardholder self-service is the front end for the visitor management application. So employees can invite visitors over and send out meeting requests from cardholder self-service on their own. That way they don't have to call reception or security and say, you know, can you invite Taylor over to the office this morning at 10 o'clock? We're going to have a Linnell presentation. Again, that seems like a very simple request. If you're a large organization, that could be 100 requests per day, which is going to be a lot of time that's taking away from reception or for security, which, you know, again, inputting information into the visitor management system probably isn't their primary task. So that way the cardholders can invite their own um, visitors over to the facility. When they get there, uh, we have a visitor management kiosk station now where they can do their enrollment. They can go ahead and sign in, get their picture taken. Um, they'll be able to you know, review any documents that you all may feel that are necessary, whether that is a PDF document, a non-disclosure agreement, a small one minute, two minute safety video, for example. They can review those from the kiosk station, acknowledge on screen by signing off on that, that I have reviewed those documents, get their picture taken, print a temporary badge, you know, and kind of take care of their own enrollment once they get there. Um, then the front desk application beside it just basically says, this is who's expected for the day. This is who's currently on site. This is how long they've been here and have they checked out or not. So um, it's a kind of a full in visitor management application that we've created now and it's all done in a browser environment. Over on the right hand side is where um, IT and a lot of the administrators will spend their time in a product that we have called Watch specifically for the IT community. It allows them to really interrogate the uh, on-guard server to see how everything is running to make sure that we are not running at you know, 98% CPU cycles instead of the normal 50%, that we don't have hard drives that are running hot or getting full too quickly or are exhibiting, you know, symptoms of a potential failure. All of those things can be, you know, monitored and um, reported on through the watch application. Uh, policies is really meant for audit and compliance driven organizations. If you want uh, between ourselves, IPS and you all, it's kind of a three legged stool. Um, we can create your policies and get those into OnGuard so that OnGuard reacts in a manner, um, you know, that's specific to your organization and how you go about your business so that when it comes to audit time, you can prove that you and the system have followed the policies that you have set forward. Also, we've strengthened our user roles in the system uh, tremendously. So cybersecurity has been um, a real focus for the organization over the course of the last few years. And, um, you know, from things that we take for granted these days, like, you know, stronger passwords, uh, expiring passwords, passwords that are minimum character links and, you know, letters, characters and symbols, all the way to things like third party authentication now. So uh, if you want to authenticate with login ID and password, but you also want a text message sent over with a code prior to being able to do the full authentication, uh, we do support that now as well through the user application. But most everyone is gonna spend their time here in the middle as a user, whether you're monitoring alarms, viewing video, uh, doing photo ID badging, running reports, everything is really gonna be, you know, from a user standpoint is primarily done here in this intersection. With that, we've created what we call our new console. Um, the console is um, a way to navigate through OnGuard through, um, through tabs that are on the screen. So basically uh, this, if you look over here on the right-hand side, here's a scroll bar over here on the right-hand side. And as you scroll down through here, there's going to be these tabs that are going to be located below that. And they're going to be called, you know, monitor credentialing uh, reports, visitor management. And so instead of navigating through the start menu, scrolling down to Linnell on guard, clicking on that, scrolling down through all the folders and then opening what you want there, you can just look at the tabs that you see on the screen and then you can touch on those and it'll take you, you know, into the application where you want to go. You can customize the console as well so that if you wanted uh, external content, so that you're using, let's say, milestone for video, for example. You can bring a milestone tile in and you can put that in our console so that if you wanted to launch the milestone piece, you can do that from our console. 
if you wanted to have live radar, if you wanted to have external web content, uh, let's say that you monitor world news, you know, so you wanted to bring in, you know, Fox News, CNN, MSN, whatever your favorite news feed is, you can have, you know, links to those things as well and create tiles for those. So you can click on those and it'll launch those as well. So uh, very nice, easy platform to be able to navigate through OnGuard now. And then at the top, the new piece that you're looking at here is our new dashboards that we've created for version eight. So on top of the console and where you would normally have your tiles, you're going to have a dashboard at the top, which would be information that you would normally have to go and run a report to receive. So you can see, you know, denied events, you can see system events, you can see access granted, video events, and you can put those in a lot of different formats here so that that's usable information, you know, for you on the screen. Now, this is the part that Dennis is going to go over in a little bit. Uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time here because I really want him to show it to you, but it's a really nice new clean interface for um, all of the normal aspects of OnGuard that, that you're used to, but it also brings in other things as, you know, again, that external web content into, um, you know, the viewer here in front of you, instead of having to launch those things from the console, everything would be available all here in one screen, but in a really nice new modern type interface. And again, like I said, I don't want to steal Dennis's thunder, so we'll, we'll actually get to the live demo for that here in just a minute. One of the things that the Magic Monitor will do for you as well is it allows you to monitor multiple systems through the same interface. So our two systems that we own, the Netbox or the S2 product, the OnGuard product that you probably already have installed, plus many third-party video applications, everything can be managed through this one. So let's say that you own multiple sites that had, um, you know, maybe OnGuard or Linnell video in one location, it has Milestone in another location, it has a Vigilon in a third location, you would be able to monitor all three of those video applications through this one interface instead of having to have three different, um, you know, interfaces in front of you to be able to manage that video from. So again, it's kind of a um, kind of a one stop area here where you can have all of this information come into one screen. Again, as we go back to that dashboard that we talked about just a little bit ago, not only do we have over on the side where we can have some of this report information graphically displayed at the top of the console uh, in the dashboard format, we've also created a completely new report engine. First time that we've created a new report engine over 20 years. Um, you guys are used to our crystal report engine. We have about 155 canned reports that are already in the system. Uh, those reports are not easily modified. Uh, that's one of the reasons why there are so many of them in the database. So we've created what we call an ad hoc report tool now uh, in the new browser interface or the new browser report engine. And so that way, when you go in and you want to see, instead of seeing access denied, access granted, and other badge events here, let's just say that you want to see access denied events. Well, you can very easily take the granted and other badge events out of this so that whenever you run your report, you're only getting the data that you want. In the current report engine that we have, you may have to go into either SQL or Crystal to modify that or come to us and have us create a custom report for you to be able to run that information. So again, it's a lot easier. And due to the fact that you can manipulate the reports, um, you know, quite a bit, there's no reason to have 155 of them in the system anymore. So when you look at it, you're probably going to find 30, uh, 30 to 35. Those will grow as we get requests for more and more reports in the system. Um, and you'll see those, plus we're not taking out the 155 that are already in there. So if you're used to using the reports in the way that you use them today, you're going to continue to be able to do that. And then if you want to create new reports through the browser interface, you'll be able to do that as well. So we're going to we're going to maintain both report engines for a period of time before we completely migrate over to the browser interface. Now, when I said in the beginning that the new browser interfaces over the course of years have finally been completed or rounded out, they're fully baked now where you can do literally 100% from the browser interface of what you can do from the, thin, from the thick client, these are the things that I'm talking about. In version 7.6, you were not able to do uh, maps uh, in the thin client alarm monitoring application. Now you can. You can launch video, you can open and close doors, you can respond to alarms, you can mark alarms as pending, for example. Um, you can look at uh, the equipment that's on the system and see whether or not the equipment is communicating with the server. Maybe you have an offline device and it needs to be serviced or something. But anyway, they're fully interactive maps and that's now available in version 8. One of the things that was not available in version 7.6 either was a full video interface uh, for milestone video. And now we have the milestone interface brought into uh, the OnGuard monitor application. So not only are you getting your access events, now you're also getting full video. That could be live video, recorded video, 
um, you know, kind of that quick view uh, of video. If you wanted to do things like any type of forensic searches or, you know, doing a motion search through recorded video, it's best to go to the full video interface to do that. This is for, like I said, quick monitoring of live and recorded video um, in the field. So. Um, the other thing too that we've added into the system is uh, some additional capability for the Blue Diamond application. Again, Blue Diamond is the ability for you to use your phone as a credential. Um, and as we take that to the next level, we're bringing in things like Hey Siri commands so that you don't have to constantly, you know, open your phone up and adjust things on your phone or open and close the application. You can, as you pull into the parking lot, you can just talk to your phone and say, Hey Siri, start Blue Diamond. And it'll go ahead and start the Blue Diamond mobile application, which again, then when you approach the front door, you don't have to take your phone out of your out of your purse, your pocket, or your backpack. When as you approach the door, if you have the ability to go through that door, it will go ahead and authenticate for you and open the door for you. So phone as a badge has been a, a really big um, um, addition for uh, the Blue Diamond application. One of the things that we've also done with Blue Diamond is we've created some um, healthy buildings solutions pieces in here so that if you want to build in a self-assessment into the Blue Diamond application so that employees have to answer these questions prior to coming to the office every day, you can go ahead and turn those on within Blue Diamond. You create your own questions that are specific for your organization. Uh, and then the, and again, employees would have to answer those. If those questions come up answered in, you know, in a manner that isn't, um, you know, compliant with your organization, we can go ahead and automatically deny access to that employee. So if they answered one of those questions uh, as, as a yes, for example, if I have elevated temperature or if I've been around someone, uh, you know, who's had COVID, you know, in the last few days or something like that, if I've answered yes to those, it can automatically give them a, a, an access denied event if they come to the doorway. Um, so all things that you all can, you know, manipulate to make those stronger or, or maybe it's a situation where, um, you know, when they come to the office, instead of just denying access, uh, it says, you know, you need to go and, and see someone at the at the office prior to being able to be fully admitted because you may want to do a temperature check or something like that at the office. So just something else that's been built into the Blue Diamond application. One of the things that we've done and we've been asked for for this from both the end users and the VARs um, is how do I know when my software support agreement is going to expire? So in version eight, we've built in a, a little, you know, SUSP reminder that's going to come up uh, at 90 days, 60 days, 30 days. And then if you have it renewed within that 30 day period, it's going to let you know every day until it expires. Um, so it'll just be a message that comes up across the screen. You hit the OK button and it goes away and you go back to normal business. But at least you'll be notified that your support agreement is going to expire. So again, this is something that we've been asked for for a very long time and it's finally built into version eight. One of the other things that we've done here too is we have uh, built in the ability to integrate with what we call the Von Duprin RU and RM exit devices. So in your building, you probably have crash bars at the ex at the ex the exit doors, or probably I would say uh, I would say probably 80% of the buildings do. And in a situation like a school, for example, and a lot of times either maintenance or facilities has to go around with an Allen wrench or a special a special key to dog those doors down so that those doors are open during the day. And then they have to go back and repeat that entire process in the afternoon to lock those doors back up. Um, with the new version, what we can do is we can electrically control these devices and we can put them on schedules. So if the gymnasium doors need to open every morning at eight o'clock, we can electrically dog these crash bars down to make sure that the doors are open. Or if there's going to be a meeting in the gymnasium at seven o'clock on Tuesday night and generally facilities or maintenance isn't at the facility on Tuesday night, uh, we can have them go ahead and unlock that door remotely. And then when the meeting is over, they can go ahead and relock that door, um, you know, without having to come down to the facility. So something that the consultant community has been asking us for for uh, a couple of years, and we have that built into the system now. So again, if you're building a new facility or you're adding additional doors, this might be something that you would be interested in. So these are a lot of the things that are that are built into version eight now. Um, uh, we also uh, have built in uh, support for uh, Bosch cameras. So, um, you know, Bosch being a very large organization manufacturer of a lot of different things, not just security equipment, but they do make a, a very robust line of cameras that we have integrated into the system as well. So in a nutshell, those are the things that are new in version eight. So I am going to turn this over to Dennis and
All right, Dennis, you want to go ahead and take over the screen here and. Yeah, can let me know when you can see my screen. All right, I see you. Well, let me try to request it again. Okay. Can yes, we sir. Sir? yes, sir. We can see okay. it. Thank you. Okay, perfect. So, Greg, if you could, just uh, as you know, I've been having some issues with sharing my screen. So, for some reason, something pops up, uh, doesn't move along, whatever it may be. Just look, give me a heads up, and we'll we'll throw your magic monitor on. Okay. Okay. Well, good morning. Hopefully, everybody's doing well. Uh, as Greg mentioned, uh, I'm here to talk about the magic monitor piece. Now, there's there's two pieces to the magic monitor piece that I think is important uh, to, to realize. The first is that with uh, OnGuard 8.0, uh, this is new to the magic. This is new to the OnGuard side with Magic Monitor, uh, so it does have limited um, uh, limited functionality at this point. This is originally a S2 Netbox product. Uh, so what you will see is I will show you some things that will be coming by the end of this year. Most will be by the end of, uh, I would say, by the start of third quarter. Um, but we'll, we'll talk mainly about what is um, existing. So to start out with, Magic Monitor is basically a, uh, a product that is kind of like a window pane for a lot of different uh, applications. So. We can do live video recording or live video. We can uh, access your, your recorded video. We can see your access control events with your uh, video events. We can do digital signage, which we'll talk about. And we can do uh, situational awareness, which is basically when a panic button is pushed or when there's an event that takes place, you can have your screens automatically change if they have Magic Monitor installed on. Now, I mentioned that there's, there's going to be some functionality that's not there right now. Those two pieces really are going to be digital signage. So we're not able to push out digital signage through OnGuard right now. Eventually we will, probably again by the start of third quarter. The second piece is situational awareness, being able to push out content either manually or automatically um, uh, through OnGuard. That is not a functionality that's there right now. So basically what the functionality looks like is you have uh, live video, you have your access control events with your um, uh, also kind of attaching those those video clips with that. Uh, and then we can also do some digital or dynamic floor plans, which we'll talk about. But I'll show you all of the features. I just want to kind of be aware that there's some functionality, uh, mainly pushing content to other screens that is not there at this moment in the OnGuard product. So to start out, I just want to show you real quick uh, a few things. First is systems. So as you can see here, I'm connected to two different access control systems, two different NetBox systems. We do have the ability to um, add in the OnGuard product here, as uh, Greg mentioned before, and a video system. So I'm connected to four. Uh, this is my home system. It's not currently powered up. And then we have uh, an exact system and VRX, which is uh, a product that was born um, through the Linellis 2 uh, product management team. And so we can actually add as many as here we really want to. So as you can see, we have NetVR, uh, we have for VRX, we have Exact, Vigilon, Milestone, um, and we'll be we'll be adding a few others. So the nice thing is, as Greg mentioned, if you have an Exact system at one building and you are migrating those over to Milestone, um, you can bring all of those in until you're ready to fully migrate, and you can kind of monitor this and manage that as if it's just one one system. So it looks really slick. The other thing I'll show you is display. We can make this screen look and feel how we want it to. So if you are, uh, you know, maybe maybe you really like the color pink, I can very easily change my screen to where it looks and feels, you know, the way that you want it to. I like the black on black, and so I'm going to change that. Now the other part of it is, is we can also create layouts very easily. So all the ones that have the check marks are the ones that I'm currently actively kind of using uh, that show up on my screens, but I can create any type of layout that I want to pretty quickly. So this is technically 400 cells. Um, all we ask is, uh, you know, it's probably not a good idea to use 400 cells for video, but we can design this and build this how we want to. So we can merge these cells and maybe you can use those for cameras. And this could be a hallway camera or a turnstile lane. 
Um, or you can build it as a, uh, you know, once this functionality is there as a, uh, a digital signage type of screen, but you can save it and you can have it as an active screen on your layouts, which here are my active screens that I'm currently looking at. And you can name them, you can do whatever you want with them. So for example, this one will be, you know, my video access and map. And then this one over here is my turnstile or entry view. So let's just kind of jump in real quick. So what we are currently looking at is live video. So this is connected back to our Boston headquarters or our Framingham headquarters for uh, one of our Linnell S2 product lines. And so we are looking at, you know, a couple different servers actually. So one is an exact server and one is a VRX server. Uh, but there's a number of functionality that we can do with it. We can zoom in. I can very easily just click and zoom in. Maybe I want this view. Uh, but what's nice about this magic monitor is I can create virtual cams. So if I don't necessarily uh, have the resources or the money right now to purchase an extra camera uh, to get a view that already a camera is looking at, just a zoomed in view, uh, then I can create these virtual cams. And I'll kind of give you an idea here what that means, virtual cam. And so as I go back to that view that I was just looking at, I can then add in the virtual cam that I was just looking at or that I just created. So virtual cam, this is it here. I can bring that in. Now I don't have to buy that second camera. I have both views that are sitting here. They're, they're obviously thinking a little bit. They're pretty high quality here. Uh, but I have both of those views without having to buy a second camera and a second camera license. The next thing I want to show is I'm going to move to a different view here. Uh, actually, let's go back to that one. Uh, is the ability to do your access control events with your video. So as you see at the bottom here, these are your access control events. If I want to see all of my events, I can click that and I can see any time that someone logged into your OnGuard system. I could see anytime there's motion, if you have the, the cameras integrated on those cameras. Uh, as you can see, I've logged in, Greg's logged in. Uh, so, but I typically on this screen show the access control because what it gives me is it shows me the access granted, access denied, that wrong door, if it's an unknown card, whatever it may be. But what's nice is it integrates the access control with the video. So if I want to see Vlad going through this door here, I can take a look at him. There's his card holder picture. Uh, and then I can also see the recorded video clip that's associated with this. So what's nice about this is I can even go a step further. And if he's not wearing his mask, I could take a snapshot of this. It saves it to my media library and I can have access to that later. I can actually create a whole case out of this and say, hey, Vlad, you're not wearing your mask when you're walking through the office. Here are every single, you know, here's a picture for every single time that you, you did not wear a mask or a video clip and you can create those cases with it. If I want to go straight to this video recording with that, for example, if I'm using Milestone, I don't necessarily have to open up Milestone to do so. I can just click on this open in forensics and it opens up that recorded clip so I can, so I can export it. The other side of it is if I want to see everywhere that Vlad has been, just click on the icon there. Here's everywhere that Vlad has been. So let's just kind of take a little peek here, see how many times he walks through the office without his mask on. He takes it off. Obviously, the reason he's taking it off is because there's a camera there that's taking his picture. But uh, and every single one, you'll see him take it off as soon as he pull, gets off the elevator, looks at the camera, and it lets him in. The other side of it is I can very easily do a search for a door. So if I want to see anybody that's gone through the suite entrance, I could take a look. Here's everybody that's gone through the suite entrance. If I want to see you know, if I want to go to their cardholder record from here, I would be able to go to their cardholder record from here and make changes in the system. This, I haven't connected this piece of it yet, uh, so it takes a second for it to pop up, but it should pop up. And so this is kind of what you're looking at. It will look different on the OnGuard side. So what you are seeing is this is the NetBox side of, of our software. So it will look different. It will look just like the cardholder record um, inside of the OnGuard uh, browser piece. Okay, so next thing is, is I'm going to show you, there's, there's a couple pieces here. So I am in this icon here. This, this gives me all of the media that I can use for my magic monitor. So I have clips, for example, if, you know, if, if I can't get my cameras to work, I, I have some of these virtual cams or these, these uh, clips that are pre-recorded that I can click on or 
I could very easily just do some digital signage and play that. You can play the video as well, or the video and the sound. A um, few other pieces to it is we can do some, um, talk about virtual cameras, any image. You know, typically when I do a demo, a live demo, and I have some time to put this together, I will build it based around the customer that I'm visiting. And basically all I do is I Google images, and then I can bring those images into here. So there's nothing specific that I need to worry about. Then we have the servers over here. So this would be your access control server and your video servers that you have built in. So what's nice is I can, I'm gonna go just select a grid. I can go select a camp a server and I can just drag that server over and it fills up as many as it possibly can before it obviously runs out depending on how many cameras you have. And so that's one nice thing to do it. We can do some tours so I can throw multiple cameras kind of doing a, a switching from camera to camera if I wanted to. Uh, so this is kind of the, the media that you have access to to bring in. And then this would be your magic monitor views. So I've created a bunch of them. There's really no max of how many you can do. Uh, it just kind of gives you a, a, a snapshot of them. Uh, one is, you know, you can do like a three by three entry view if you wanted to. So it will show you, you know, who's gone through that door recently, what door that is, what their cardholder picture is, and the latest person to go, as I mentioned before. That's also the live ca camera for that. But if I want to see the last few people that have gone through this door, I can switch through and see that. There's also another view that I really like to use for entry views or for turnstiles, and that is this turnstile or entry view. And so it just kind of labels it for me. So I can get a really, you know, so I really understand which door this is without having to dig in and look into this, this data here. And same thing, I can still switch through and see who's gone through this door recently. And then we also have the ability to uh, do some, just kind of give you an idea, some digital, again, this, these next two pieces I'm getting ready to show you are not available there at this moment, uh, but it will be in the near future. And that's to be able to do digital signage, whether it's something like this, something you know, like this, uh, or even a video that's playing. Uh, and future capabilities would be that as this is on the front of the, uh, as people walk through or wherever your screens may be at, uh, and an emergency takes place and you push a panic button or you uh, lock down your building or an, a specific event takes place, you can have it automatically change to an emergency evac plan, right? So it will show you exactly where you're located. It would show you the closest cameras to you for the exits. And that way you can determine if it's safe or not to actually move throughout the facility. So this is, again, the situational awareness piece. Uh, so it's pretty, pretty. there's a lot of good functionality there for that. Uh, but that is something, again, I would say is probably out about three to five months before you'd have functionality on guard 8.0. Uh, the other thing is I did a demo uh, not too long ago. So this one's still up here. And it kind of gives you an idea of some of the functionality that you have the ability to do in it. Uh, and that is if you have multiple buildings uh, in one area or throughout the country, uh, you can pull up the map here. You can see your cameras that you're typically viewing, you see the weather for your city that you're in. But I would be able to click on a, a building and it pops me to that specific building, um, it gives me that floor plan. And I can click on doors or readers. I can see who's gone through that reader recently. I can see the video that's associated with that reader. I can do a momentary unlock or lock and unlock this door, uh, change the schedule if I wanted to. I can also click on cameras and see the camera. Uh, this camera is actually in process of being replaced, but it kind of gives me an idea. I can say, if someone says, hey, uh, Dennis, can you take a look at this person? There's somebody standing in the, in the uh, main hallway here, right by the front door. They kind of look a little suspicious. Can you take a look at them? I can click on it and I can see that they're standing there and I can follow them around from door to door, and here's another motion door. I can actually have a motion set up on every single one of these doors if I had cameras in those rooms. And I can click through, and I can just keep following them through. Again, I could create more of these motion zones and keep following through the building so I know exactly where they're at uh, without having to get too close to them. Now, the one of the last few pieces of the actual Magic Monitor views that I like to show is the widget desktop. 
So what you're going to see here is a few things. One, we can do an RSS feed. Uh, obviously, our RSS feed is having some issues right now. Uh, but we have these already populated in here. So I can do traffic. I can do uh, a website if I wanted to. I can do Pandora. I can do YouTube TV if you have a, a, an account with that. Weather. Uh, we can also do um, you know, Twitter feeds if we wanted to. So if your company has a Twitter feed and you want to get information out to you, the employees or the visitors, you can do that as well. Um, and I'll kind of give you an idea. We, we actually run this at our office here. And you'll see a couple of these pop up. I'm going to click on this one, see how long it takes to pop this camera up. So you can see in the back here, this is we actually have four magic monitor stations that are running. Uh, this is just running some you know, YouTube TV, some widgets. Um, and then at the very top, we have actual live cameras. These two screens here, we have live cameras that are being displayed. But you can have multi-screen, multi-view. And then a few other things. Uh, the ability to, I can click on this and see all of my magic monitors that I have the ability to connect to. Um, obviously, I'm working from home, so that I just have mine. But what you will have in the future is the ability to push a ticker message. I can say how many spins, I can push it through, I can change this color, I can change this size, all of that fun stuff. And we also have an app called Magic Monitor Remote. And Magic Monitor Remote, so I'm not locked down to this computer um, or my workstation, it allows me to see what that other, see what these Magic Monitor stations are doing. I can change to push their views if I wanted to. So for example, if it, if it happens to be a recycling day um, and you, you already had that view created, and you forgot to put it on, you could send that out and put that on. If you wanted to send a ticker message because something, you know, there's a suspicious person on campus or there's a be on the lookout, you can push that out as well. So there's a lot of really cool stuff that you can do with that. But what I would say is, you know, I know we're, we, I'd like to leave some, some time for some questions for Greg and I, uh, but Magic Monitor gives you the functionality to do really whatever you want with your system. Um, should you card holder, we have the ability to send out, and this is a future uh, for the OnGuard 8.0, but to send out a notification to a, a certain group, um, so an employee group, so maybe it would be the security team, and I'd say tornado warning. And this would be able to go to one of the apps that event, again, eventually you'll have access to, but I can send this out to them and, and they would get that through that app. Uh, the other thing is, um, it's, it's crowdsourced media. So being able for an employee to send, you know, to see somebody suspicious in a parking lot, breaking into a car, be able to send that picture, that image to security through this website. Again, those two, the crowdsourced and the, the mass messaging, this is something that's probably more like a year out um, compared to digital signage and situational awareness because it is a separate app that, that uses this, but eventually that functionality will be there. So with that being said, uh, we want to open it up for any questions. I'm going to unshare my screen here, but any questions that uh, anyone may have, or if you want to see anything specific with Magic Monitor that Greg was going over. Does anybody have any questions? I don't see anything in the chat. Okay, if you don't, I know it was a lot of information. Um, so I'll be following up with everyone if you need time to kind of digest things um, and we'll be touching base with you throughout. Um, so if any, if you think of something later on today or even next week, uh, you, you know how to reach IPS, you can always get in touch with us. Um, and if we don't know the answer, we'll get with uh, Dennis and Greg and they will help us out, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. So last chance for any questions before we do our drawing for our raffle prize, our Amazon gift card. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and shake up my very official raffle box here. Let's see who we have. I've got Tom from 600 Vine and I see you're still on the call. So you are our lucky winner. 
So I'll get that gift card out to you as well as the lunch gift cards for all of our customers. Um, if anybody has any questions, you all have my information. You have your sales reps information. Uh, feel free to reach out to us and we will do what we can to, to get you squared away with any of the topics we covered here today. Thank you guys. That was great. We really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks everyone for attending. Thanks for having us today. All right, thank you. All right, good day. Bye everyone.